I found these model rocket engines in my garage. They're old. How old? I'm not sure. There's an old landline number written on the back, though. You're supposed to use them to launch model rockets up into the sky and bring them back with parachutes. Wait. I think I'll build a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher. I'm Rob, and this is Print to Build. These little rocket engines are made of cardboard, have a bunch of black powder, and a clay nozzle. You use an electrochemical igniter to set them off. If I'm going to make an RPG, minus the G, the first thing I need to do is make a rocket. The rocket engines I have are Class A, very small. Anytime I'm 3D printing something to match a real-world part, I measure and then I experiment. I usually need to print slightly larger. I have a whole box of these things. You're just looking for that Goldilocks moment. Since I'm going to shoot this rocket bazooka style, as opposed to on a launch pad, I figure I should design it to be part rocket and part bullet. The fins on a rocket are there to stabilize it, but maybe the barrel will do some of that. Until I figure out my rocket, I'm not willing to commit to designing the launcher yet. That's why I'm going to use a wrapping paper tube. It made someone happy keeping their gift a surprise, and now it can make me happy as a conduit for a mildly risky prototype rocket launch. Like this, but faster, better, and outside. Not having a launcher means rigging up something for testing. I'm going for that junkyard aesthetic with some battery clamps, found wiring, and an extra battery case from a toilet. Yeah, from a toilet. The igniters I found with the rocket engines in my garage look pretty bad. They shouldn't look black and crusty. Maybe black and smooth. Definitely not crusty. But apparently they still work. Last thing before I try this out. The class of a rocket engine determines how much thrust it has. An A-10 rocket can lift about 3 ounces, or 85 grams. The rocket has to lift itself, and it's a little under 9 grams. Pretty impressive that it can lift 10 times its own weight. I can't do that. 16 grams. We're going to be just fine. So I launched it. Outside. Out of a cardboard tube. Straight up so the odds of not harming something were better. It wasn't great. Probably because it didn't match the diameter of the barrel, maybe because the fins weren't big enough. So I came up with this. It worked much better. Not satisfied, I decided to push it with some other designs. There's one with a screw to it, except that it failed to print and really didn't make any sense to anyone with a cursory understanding of aerodynamics. There's one with two sets of fins, but it probably rattled around in the tube again. Then there's the ultra-cool print-in-place fold-out fin rocket, which I couldn't test because the fins were too big to fit in the tube folded down. I decided to move on to the launcher. I designed a wrapping paper tube with attachment points at either end so you can bolt several of them together in some accessories. It looks a lot cooler than a wrapping paper tube, though. Too bad it's about a millimeter short of the right diameter. That's okay. I fixed it when I made the real ones. There, see? I made three of them. They're a foot long each. Next, I made the ignition housing. If you happen to make RPGs for a living and know what this part should actually be called, please let me know in the comments. I wanted to make something that would allow me to load the rocket, and that could have a permanent means of igniting those rockets. I'm going to take a big washer, cut it in two, and have that be the two contact surfaces for each of the wires coming off the rocket igniter. I also made an exhaust cone for the front to help make sure I don't burn my face off. The ignition housing goes together with two screws, which also form the pivot for the hinge that allows you to open and close it. I only had some ridiculously long screws, so I used them to put the main body together. 
I cheated and used an electric drill to do it. Yeah, yeah, I know. You have to be pretty careful when screwing into plastic because it's notoriously easy to strip. The end product is 43 inches long, too long for me to show. Let's test it out. First, a straight up shot. You can see at 240 frames a second that some gases are escaping between the joints, but it works well enough to try it sideways. A little bit of a curve there at the beginning, but it straightened out and went about 300 feet. The exhaust cone kind of worked, hard to say. I'm satisfied. Time to build the real thing. I tried a whole bunch of filaments before I settled on what I'd ultimately use. You can see I printed two samples of the metallic silk. One is at 50 microns and one's at 200. I actually decided to print at 200 because it has a lot more shine to it, despite the finer print being smoother. That'll be for my shiny pieces. I've spent a week or two printing, so let's build this thing. We'll start from the back first with the exhaust nozzle and ignition assembly. I've changed things up a little for the ignition assembly so I can, you know, actually make it work for the final build. You can also see on the back that it's not a flush piece. All of the components in this build now feature flanges to make sure those hot gases don't escape. It's time to begin adding wiring, starting with soldering connections to the two halves of the washer. Each wire coming off the igniter will make contact with a washer half and pass the necessary energy when the trigger is pressed. There are a lot of ways to bond plastic, almost none of them good, and I'm sure there are ways to bond metal to plastic as well. I'm perhaps as surprised as you that cyanoacrylate superglue work just fine. I went ahead and ordered a variety of sizes of nice stainless steel and black oxide metric screws for the actual build. Like everything else you see here, I've included links in the description if you want to buy some. Speaking of clicking things, it's a good time to ask yourself, do I like this video? Well, you're watching it, so why not show it by clicking the like button? Also, do I have a fear of missing out on future videos or just want to help this fine creator out? Go ahead and subscribe as well, and tap the bell if you want to be notified of new videos. And with that, the back assembly is done, for now. Some of the pieces without screws are held on by other components later in the build. Now for the front of the unit. Even with a default infill of 15%, these are really dense, heavy pieces. They've got a great feel to them. Almost as good as how I felt when the largest piece snapped the filament 23 hours into a 24 hour print and the runout sensor didn't catch it. At the suggestion of a friend, I decided to add NATO rails onto the body for accessories. I thought it looked cool, but it turns out to be a reasonable way to attach things, so I incorporated it into the trigger assembly coming up. This is the main barrel. There's a barely ergonomic shoulder mount I've designed for the bottom, which also features slots for straps in case you need a rocket launcher as part of your everyday carry. You'll notice some slots on the barrel and in other parts of the rocket launcher. They're greebling, little details that hopefully give the whole thing scale and complexity, without scale and complexity. You know, they're supposed to look cool. I think they look cool. Maybe it needs more. There are also holes in strategic places to run wires through. The back assembly, in order to allow you to load the rocket from the back, is hinged and attaches to the rail and shoulder mounts at the base of the unit. Hingy. It's starting to look like something. I like it. I like it a lot.
Here comes the electronics box. This will house the battery and the arming switch, along with any excess wiring. At the back, on each side, there's a small housing that the ignition wires flow through and has an LED. The LED will light every time the launcher is armed and the trigger is pressed, whether or not there's actually an igniter or rocket present. That allows me to test if the system is working without, well, launching a rocket. In order to achieve illuminating the LEDs, even when an igniter isn't present, I've wired them up in parallel. That requires feeding the wires back and forth across the whole assembly, which I've tried to edit out for your pleasure. The covers for the LED housings have a small slot for a triangular lens I've printed on my resin 3D printer. It's really hard to get really transparent parts on an FDM printer, but it's really easy with resin. They just snap in, because I'm awesome. For the trigger, I'm going to use a genuine Sanwa arcade button. In hindsight, it's overly sensitive for a rocket launcher, but it's killer for fighting games. Here we go. NATO rails for the win. You don't really want to just have a trigger when you're shooting rockets, especially if you have an overly sensitive trigger. That's where the arming switch comes in. You have to flip up the cover, then flip the switch, and then you can use the trigger. When you build something, you want to make sure you have pride in it. Putting your name or logo on it should make you pause and ask if you've done a great job. I think I've done a great job, so here comes the logo. Also, it's the first build for the channel. Serial number 01. that it's done. You just put a rocket in it and go.
case you think everything went perfectly on the first try, think again. Failure is how we learn best, and like any build, there were plenty of failures. Some failed prints, but mainly some designs that didn't quite go how I had hoped, or even colors I decided against. Go out and make something, and don't be afraid to fail. I'll be back with another video soon.